Uh, we wanted to uh, revisit everything involving uh, Errol Hawani over the weekend because he, you know, this this was a pretty significant story over the weekend after he appeared on SmackDown doing a pair of live hits at the Bell Center and then returning on Saturday night for the Elimination Chamber where he appeared on the kickoff show and then during the actual event uh, seated next to George St. Pierre and being introduced by Michael Cole. Um, We should probably rewind to Friday because where this became a bigger story was after his appearance on SmackDown, Tony Khan uh, tweeting at Ariel Hawani, insulting him for essentially essentially calling him a, uh, a fraud. And you're as legitimate of a reporter as Tony Schiavone. And then Ariel came back insulting Tony Khan, which apparently went over very big backstage at WWE and then uh, Tony Khan getting in the last word there. So after this insult, uh, we had Michael Cole introduce Ariel on Saturday as the unbiased Ariel Helwani, who asks all the hard questions, whether you want to answer them or not. So this was the one of one of the big stories over the weekend. There was a lot of criticism levied at both Tony Khan and Ariel Helwani for different reasons, uh, but also calling into question Ariel Helwani taking a role like this with WWE as a very prominent journalist. And he did address it today on the MMA hour and stating the fact that he believes that there, there is a line that he is a mixed martial arts reporter and does not classify himself as a pro wrestling journalist. He is not. Now that said, he has reported pro wrestling news stories as well. So I, I do think like it does somewhat cloud the issue. Like last month when the, the the Saudi Arabia story was was being rumored, I mean, Ariel was one that dispelled that report and a lot of people went with him because of his standing that he has among people. And that was cited as one of the, the key reporters that was denying a sale. I would say, you know, beyond like maybe strict, like here's the news type of like reporting. I think it calls into question like interviewing and and whether or not that is considered journalism especially the type of interviewing that ariel does you know like just even the tony khan interview itself asking him to you know give us information about the cm punk you know uh uh, uh, fight like is that a is that journalism i would argue it is um too and and so does ariel get to dictate whether or not that is a journalistic interview yeah i would like we should we should like specify and it's like Ariel has done um like this is not the first weekend that we're talking about him like diving into professional wrestling and you know do, doing things it it probably this was the furthest i think that he has ever gone into a pro wrestling space but he has he has popped up you know sending videos onto impact he has even sent in stuff that has aired on dynamite in the past going back a few years uh he has done pre-show panels for wwe slash nxt but this i i think certainly and he also disclosed on the show today he was paid for th- this past weekend which he was not for last year when he did a voiceover ahead of a uh, Daniel Cormier refereeing at extreme rules. But he believes that he is not a pro wrestling reporter and thus um, he's going to do this. And he said he, he loved doing it. I mean, m- my thing is that I, I feel that it's understanding that in professional wrestling, I think that like news reporting, he has to divide that. And, you know, he does have sources in that company and has reported news. I think now it's like if you have to make a choice between the two, he has clearly made a choice and is open to doing more with WWE. He's open to doing stuff with AEW. He is going to do it. He says he enjoys it and he is not going to have anyone online dictate to him what he is going to choose for for his career. And mm. and that's certainly going to bring about a debate from people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, one of the key parts I would say about it is that he, up until this weekend, was a free agent – I suppose in this sort of like hosting sort of like a uh, role that he has in professional wrestling. And that's sort of like the, the stance that he's taken he, he, after this weekend, he still remains a free agent. This was just sort of like a one weekend thing. Um, you know, you, you and I talked a lot about this. Uh, we talked about it on Friday. Um, we talked about it off air, you know, cause it's, it's a, it's a topic that I think directly affects us 
it's a topic that, you know, um, I think we've discussed several times. Um, and, you know, from from what you have told me, it, it seems like this. When I ask you whether or not you would do this, you said you, you would. not But obviously, you're not Ariel Hawani and Ariel Hawani isn't you. Um, so, I, I, I again, it, it, it's is it OK? Is wrestling close enough to MMA that like you can separate this much? Maybe the answer is yes. Um, but I, again, you call into question whether or not Ariel Hawani is a pro wrestling journalist. He says he isn't, but are his actions up until this point that of a pro wrestling journalist? And again, up until this point, uh, up until this weekend, he was a f- he was not a, a, a associated with the WWE. At least he was not paid by the WWE. Um, this weekend he was. Does that affect his ability to be unbiased afterwards after this weekend um i i would say beyond maybe his association with with wwe um in this role this weekend maybe it's probably like the beef with tony the public beef with tony that has probably like made it difficult you know for me to um i guess trust his opinion when it comes to like yeah, and, and let me say, I, I I really did not like, you know, some of the, the comments. And, you know, you can argue that, okay, Tony Tony started it and he fought back. And that's something that Ariel has done with, with a lot of people that have come at him is he has but, but, fought. But, but who started it? I mean, who really started it, I guess? that Even that could be debated, right? They, right. They if had you're going to, to the fallout of the interview, certainly like the, this did not just come out of nowhere. There was existing issues based off the interview and Ariel's response to the interview on on his show. He was not happy with the interview. And and that comes down to as well that you, the the viewer, you, the follower of any of these shows, like, what do you want? Do you want um, I, I can tell you one thousand percent those were Ariel's legitimate feelings about that interview. Do you want that kind of transparency when an interview goes terribly and they come on and do you want just a a cookie cutter, no addressing of it? Some might not want that response. Others probably appreciate the candidness of it. Um, Mm -hmm. I think you and I having this, like I, I don't like covering other media people. I don't feel that's in my purview. I don't feel that's what I'm covering here, but there are some stories that I feel do need this discussion and and thus we're having it. And people are going to have different opinions, and I'm also not naive to the point that the modern media is changing rapidly. There are many uh, struggling reporters out there. There are str- people like with uh, media companies that you have to be very creative and opportunities are going to come your way. Now, Ariel is not someone that is is struggling, but if you don't think like this is the way media is going, where you are going to have these potential conflicts and that there is nothing um, that is going to be viewed by your audience as compromising, like there's just going to be more and more of that. I think you and I are at kind of the, the further end that, that we have like turned down things. But at the same time, like we have advertising on, on our show. That is something I um, have like, we, that, we also that- give, we also give opinion. Like we're also, we're not just, you know, here to, to like, you know, give out news. Um, and when you give out opinion, um, you're going to potentially run into even more conflict as Ariel has here in giving his opinion about Tony Khan and given his opinion about AEW, he has, um, you know, found himself in a situation where I think his credibility for those opinions are being called into question because of what what was a future association with the WWE. Um, so now going forward, if he has another opinion about AEW, I mean, this is going to be it's going to be questioned because of this association. And, and he seems fine with it. He he, he does like, like this is this is not a, a case where somebody is sort of uh doing this and then maintaining that hey i'm i'm an unbiased pro wrestling reporter like he's i am not a pro wrestling reporter and and he is just upfront about what he is doing uh with all of this um to me like i i i did not like the response that he had to to tony khan on on friday um and and i didn't like you know the yeah. The way on, so on specific, the specifically, we should say what you are not in favor of, like of the response. 
I mean, he he came back and made the the snowman line, which is to, is to me like it's. I found that to be one where it's, you know, it's it's, it's an allegation that I just think it's one that to me was, I just didn't like it. I, I did not think it. I, I'm the same. Yeah. I, I, I think that just, just kind of crosses the line, you know. Um, and I but, also didn't like the line on, on the show today. Just and, and you can see like this is obviously kind of the the internal description when he referred to Tony Khan as the kid and uh, like right out of the, like the Nick Khan uh, playbook. And mm. Uh, I mean, this is one where, like, we talked about Nick Khan referring to Tony Khan as the kid. Um, th- th- this is like two people that are identical ages um, that that we're talking about. But obviously, like, that's probably the internal term that they have for Tony Khan. But I mean, um, like, that's he is clearly open to working with with WWE, mm-hmm. and um, and that's cool. Like, that's I mean, that, that, I think that's it's awesome. Like, it's it's a dream of his. You know, it, it's it's, a, Clearly, like this is something where he is stating that uh, I want to do this. It was a great moment for me, and I'm not going to let those online dictate it for me. And th- there is a part of me that I think for many people, they would be greatly benefited by not judging or dictating their actions based on how uh, people are going to react online. Now, at the same time, I it, it is tough for me to see Ariel, who is, you know, in in this world of MMA, it is very much down the line in this sense. And he would never do this with any MMA promotions. And in pro wrestling, it's obviously he sees that that line and it's it, it's a difficult one. But he hmm. I just think it comes down to um, the fact that I, I don't think he can report on pro wrestling stories from this point onward. And he has in the past. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, you know, like he he's a freelancer for hire and and does one weekend of work for WWE preclude him from giving his opinions or at least like, you know, us looking thinking of his opinions on, you know, any wrestling company as unbiased. Obviously, it, it, ultimately, it's for the audience to d- decide. And I mean, there have been a lot of opinions about this entire thing. Um, and a lot it, of it's not like he is hiding guys. any of this either. So it's, no. it, it's, it's for the audience to decide. You're right. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, they seek out his opinions. He is a influential voice that is above a great percentage of the fighters he covers. I mean, his mm-hmm. uh, when you look at his following, um, I am surprised more fighters don't come at him because of the attention that he brings when he does put his spotlight on and has these feuds with these fighters like it has this combative version of Ariel Hawani it's been very effective for his for for his uh, standing with people they love this um I I I think at times it just it it does go too far for, for for me like I I am there because Ariel is a great journalist and reporter. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it's like he has had a lot of success doing this that, that people respond to. Um, and and yeah. now he's like fully embracing it in professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, like you mentioned, John, like I think these sort of media roles um, can be very complex, you know, now, especially when you're somebody in as varied sort of like um, – outlets as an Ariel Hawani who who does the reporting who does the interviewing who does um uh, showtime you know um 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 uh, hosting and and who does a, a live stream of, of a show where he essentially kind of talks as himself um I you know I I I will continue to uh trust I think um the MMA sources that I I get from him I I will continue to respect him as somebody you know who's at the very top of a certain industry that we're associated with um but i i i I will like question the next time i hear perhaps an opinion because of this association about wrestling in in particular i i also found it interesting the way he described sort of the the play-by-play of what was going on friday night when tony khan made the tweet and then you know, he's going backstage at the Bell Center and he's getting ready for his next hit. And then when he fires off the response to Tony and everyone's going crazy backstage, they're high fiving him. And I'm just imagining this. And it's listen, I understand the the group mentality of and we, we don't know 
you know, he's not obviously naming names, but if you're thinking of, I don't care if you're wrestlers, if you're employees with WWE, I don't care what you're, you're, you're projecting backstage in front of everybody else that AEW is the enemy. If you're a wrestler and truly believe that, I think you're out of your mind that you would ever want this company to fail. Mm Mm-hmm. That yeah. you have lived through um, a WWE that how many jobs were uh, cut over, uh, I, I should say, contracts that were uh, re- released over the last number of years. That why, why would you ever cheer on um, this, this company uh, torpedoing? Right. Now, does celebrating perhaps, you know, what what might be construed as a public win because you have, you know, a top journalist fighting on your side? Like, does that mean you don't want competition or is it simply saying like, hey, that's one for our team and, what, you know, minus one for their team? All I'm saying is that I, I hear so much of, of different wrestlers and they all complain about like the tribalism online. And please tell me that the tribalism doesn't also exist oh, among them, probably more so than anyone online. The who, tribalism is, is a function of the system that was created here, you know, and, well, and like, these companies thrive off of it as of well. Course. Like they yeah. like fans love this stuff. They love it, mm-hmm. and they're going to love the fact that we're talking about this. It's as part well. of the function. Just don't get carried away with it, everybody. You know, don't don't get into personal attacking. Don't troll people on Twitter. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll just end. And obviously, like I'm trying to be as balanced here. I'm very upfront. Ariel's been a close friend of mine going back uh, to 2007. So we said know, hi and to him at uh, on Saturday. We we did. We saw him on Saturday. He had a great joke conference. about him, uh, you know, uh, about to step into the press conference panel to be interviewed. I thought it was hilarious. Like I will say this: that Ariel has. Um, he mentioned this in his whole show today that you know he was constantly referring to the fact that the old Ariel would have reacted this way and this would have like ruined his night and such. Mm-hmm. That guy, I can tell you. Quite honestly, he has dealt with a lot of shit in his career, stuff that uh, I'll be frank, if a fraction of it had happened to me, I probably would be out of the industry. There are not too many people that could be that excommunicated from a Dana White that could survive in this industry. And if you don't Mm -hmm. think Dana White has taken great actions to prevent work, uh, money for Ariel Hawani of different jobs that he has stopped Ariel from having, um, it's it's a remarkable fact that he has made it to this part of his career. So do I understand him having this chip on his shoulder that Ariel is not going to be bullied? And that to me is very clear, whether it is a fighter, whether whether it is a promoter, whether it are is fans, he is not going to be bullied. And you might not like that tact. I, I don't always like it when he takes that tact and, and goes that direction. But he has also gone through stuff that I could not imagine. And frankly, I don't think my career would have survived going through. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely understand. I understand like somebody who's been bullied for a long time wanting to stand up for himself. I guess you just have to be careful that you don't become the bully yourself. Well, there you have it. There is our uh, our, our thoughts on one of the big stories of the weekend. Um, like a postcard right there at the end. 